Hello, hello, and welcome to Lawrence Plays, and today I'm taking another look at Satisfactory. So in the last video where I was going through and summarising what's been going on while I've been playing it, I got to the point where I've got this factory area over here, where on the ground floor we're making a load of the, the basic stuff that's that I needed for, the, for uh, make, making things. So over here we've got an iron input coming in from over, over there and from those drills. It's coming in over here, it's being made into plates, it's being made into screws, it's being made into assemblies, all, that sort of, all the sort of basic things you, you need at this point in the game. And then further over, I've got copper being brought in over here to be turned into wires and cables and probably sheets over there as well. I've also added in another floor above, which is doing a bit more of sort of the, the heavy processing. So it's bringing in some steel over here and turning, I think, I think that's steel as far as I can tell from here. And then turning it into beams and pipes and so on over there. And I think over here, we're, yes, again, we're bringing in iron up here. And I think this is making a load more iron plates and the, and the reinforced iron plates because I needed those in very, very large quantities. The big improvement that I'd made in, uh, in in Stream 4 was going off over into the distance somewhere over there, and the reason there's this coal belt flowing through here is because somewhere down there there is a, a foundry system that is digging up some iron ore and using the coal to make steel, which is then being brought over by the by these little tractor things. The little tractor things are well, they're they're, they're sort of okay. They're, they're they're fun to drive around in a bit, a bit even if the other uh, physics of them is a little bit uh, suspicious, should we say? However. I'm not very impressed with the method of uh, setting out automated routes for them to follow. Essentially, you end up driving the route manually by hand, and that leaves all these little blue arrows on on the on on the in in the area, which are a little bit unsightly. But there may be a way to turn them off. I don't, I don't to be honest, I don't really care about them all that much. But the problem with it, with the uh, this, the main problem with the system, is the tractors are kind of awkward to drive and part of part of this is probably a skill issue but also part of but I would rather but I'd much have preferred it if the automated here go out and design your route thing was a little bit easier to click tidy up when you inevitably get stuck on a belt or something like that and so whilst the uh, the tractors do will eventually teleport through things if they're set on an automatic route and they and they get stuck it setting up a nice route for the tractor to follow is extremely awkward and fiddly and yeah, I, I wasn't hugely impressed with that, uh, without automation system. I'd rather have been able to go around and just set way, individual waypoints myself, saying I want the tractor to go from here to here, in a, basically in a dead straight line, doing doing its best, and then it'd be up to me as a sort of an intelligent being to put in the, in the waypoints in sensible places, rather than just rely on my driving abilities, which are clearly, as you can see, not actually all that amazing. But I'm not here to talk about um, what, what I got up to in stream number four. You've all seen that, and look down there. You can see, you can see some of the problems with these tractors that I was referring to, where they just randomly stopped, because, probably because I stopped there when I was programming it. But anyway, I'm here to talk about stuff since then. So this is now the, from the end of stream five. What are you doing? This is now from the end of stream five, where I had accomplished some extra stuff. So you can see now that there's my, there's my original factory over there, and we'll go back and have a look at that in a moment. But for now, we're over, we're over here, and this is the steel production area that I was talking about before. So you can see we've got the, we've got that belt of, uh, belt of coal coming in from. Actually, we haven't got that belt of coal coming in. We've got the coal being brought in by one tractor and dropped off in that truck station, and then passed through a system over here. And there's an, there seems to be an additional drop-off point up here. So I've been setting up some weird things around here. And anyway, that's giving us a nice, healthy stream of coal coming in. And then down here, from these two mines, we're pulling up iron ore, which can then go into these smelteries. Or I think these are called foundries because they're a little bit bigger. Yes, these are foundries. So these are taking in the iron ore and the coal and producing steel. That steel is then fed out into another truck stop down there because this would seem to be the best sort of automated transport I had at this time. Although, to be honest, in hindsight, I'd probably have just built some ludicrously long mark belts at this point and gone, I don't care, I'm just going to have a steel belt that goes all the way from here to the factory over there and not bothered with the uh, little tractor jobbies. But yeah, you yeah, never mind, you live and learn. Uh, so yes, the steel's been put in there and then taken off to the factory over there. The other thing that I've done, which will require a little bit of running, so please bear with me, is visible up there on the top of that uh, outcropping up there. And I managed to find some coal patches up there, which were quite useful, because from there I could dig up an enormous amount of coal and then bring it down this elevator you can see here. So I've discovered, um, I've discovered elevators by this point, and that, combined with a very, very small puddle of water that I found over here and I've managed to squeeze a pump into, are now allowing me to use coal power generation. And this is a huge step forward because until this point, I've been reliant on the um, on the biofuel generators, where you have you have generators which can burn essentially wood or leaves that you rip up from the landscape, uh, and you can process that down into biofuel, which makes it last a bit longer, or you can process it into biofuel pellets, which makes it last even longer still. But even so, you still have to load all of your generators by hand. Whereas these coal generators are much better because you can just feed their input requirements into them in the, in the back over here. 
uh, and you can't see because there's trees everywhere around here. I've not uh, I've not deforested this area sufficiently well, apparently. But down here, as you can see, we have yes, we have belts coming in that are bringing in the coal, sticking it into the back of the generators, keeping them running as they need to, and then there's these pipes that are bringing the water up from that pump down there. And so this this required me to learn all about fluid handling in Satisfactory, which is is not too bad. You've got these massive great pipes that will carry 300 meters cube per minute of uh, of whatever liquid, and that's that's quite a lot. And then these pumps down here, which I believe will also how much will you dig up? You, you, this will produce 120 meters cube per minute of water, which you can then pass up this pipe. And if the, if there was more of a rise than this, I would then have to start putting pumps in along the pipe as well. But this is a nice low, a nice shallow rise coming up to here. So the uh, the pump inside the inside the offshore pump thing is perfectly capable of dealing with that. And we can then feed that into the into the uh, machines along here. Now I've kind of broken my let's try not to have things phasing through each other rules here. That's a bit uh, disgraceful. So I don't, I, let's not, let's not look at that because that is that is genuinely quite horrible. Um, <laughs> I, I, I try to prefer to, I prefer to try and you know obey the laws of physics where I can. And if we have a look at this coal generator here, you can see it uses 15 coal per minute, and it also uses um, 45 meters cube of, per minute of water. So the offshore pump is capable of producing 120 per minute. These pumps, these, these machines over here use 45 per minute, and the pipes are capable of carrying 300 per minute. So the pipes are massively over spec for what we need at the moment. And sadly, one of these pumps is not quite enough for three of these generators. So if I look at this one, we'll probably find, yes, this one's, this one's water starved at the moment, so it's not running quite as efficiently as I would like. I thought the pumps were capable of digging up 150 per minute. Maybe, I've, maybe I'm thinking of some uh, more advanced pumps that I've gained since then. But uh, yeah, in theory, this should. All, I thought this all worked quite nicely. Where you can have two pumps, one pipe, and then six uh, generators, and or, or therefore one pump and three generators. But it seems the numbers don't quite add up there. So I've, I'm, I'm, I must have made a mistake. I've also put in some um, aerial uh, foundations across here to give me a bridge so I can get over the top of this pipe because pipes are slightly too big to be climbed over. Much like in Factorio, actually, the pipes are a bit of a, a hazard to your personal navigation, uh, whereas belts you can jump over and climb on relatively easily. I've also decided to try and put all of the, uh, the, the coal generators on foundations, which has gone reasonably well at this end. So I've put the foundations down, I've, I've clipped the uh, coal generators to them, and that's worked really nicely. However, at the other end, I, I didn't have quite enough space because the, uh, the foundations were a little bit too low down, and so that one has ended up being bumped up a little bit and put, because it's been put on top of the ground over here, which is a bit of a shame. Still, this area was a great area to find because it's got some fantastic uh, natural resources available. As you can see, we've got plenty of coal coming in from over there. And you've got this scanner tool available. And at this, at this stage of the game, I can scan for caterium, which is basically gold. I can scan for iron, copper, limestone for concrete, sulfur, and coal. So if I ping for coal, this thing goes ping, and you get... Thing, and you get these markers appearing on your on your radar, so saying there's, there's coal available 58 meters away up there, and it's got a tick on it to say that is a patch I have tapped. And if I go into the uh, into the map view, they show up on here as well. So there's another one that I've tapped over here, um, and then there's another one somewhere. Oh, there's loads of them available over here, and these ones don't have ticks on them, but I can still tell what sort of level, purity level they are, and therefore how much um, I'd, I'd be able to get out of them. So that's running quite nicely. I put in an additional mine over here. This one's sulfur, as you can see by all the yellow stuff coming down here. It's going into a into a large box here and then into a truck station, and that means that from here it can then be taken away by truck to uh, to wherever it's needed. I have still I'm still not using sulfur in very large quantities. So this system, even many many hours later, this is producing more sulfur than I actually need. <laughs> I've also started using the uh, the large pylons for transporting power around. These ones are quite neat. They have a they have local connections at the bottom, which you can see in there, which, which you can connect to normal machines like this truck stop over here or the, the power station or the, to a pylon that then goes into the power station over there. But they've also got the long, much, much longer cables that you can put on here so those can go from one big pylon to another big pylon. And if you make the versions with platforms on them, they also come with a ladder as well so you can climb up them and stand on the top and go, ha ha, uh, look at all this, look at this massive area I can survey. Uh, now this is, a, this is probably a bit of a waste of the large pylons but I'd only just developed them and I wanted to try them out. So we've got, we've got a large pylon here and over there and yeah, it is approximately pointless. <laughs> so now let's return back to the uh, the main factory and have a look at what's been done over there. So over here in the main factory, actually I don't think anything has changed since uh, since since stream number four. I think every, all, all of my time was taken up with building up the, uh, the power station and the coal and the, and the sulfur mining all the way over there. So over here we've got, yeah, very, very little, very little has changed. We've got um, steel being processed over We've got steel beams being made over here, although for some reason we seem to have an enormous quantity of sulfur on the conveyor belts here. I think one of the uh, tractors must have gone to the wrong uh, wrong, wrong drop-off point, so that's going to be something I would need. To, I will need to have tidied up. 
And over here, as I was saying previously, we've got the, uh, the system, systems making the iron plates and then all of the screws required to make the, uh, the reinforced iron plates over here. And I'm storing a load of those in a storage container because I need lots of them for building things as well as for putting onto the, onto the, uh, the processing system over here. So this system is, as I said, much, much as it was before. Got a row of uh, steel pipes going over there for... I'm not even sure what we're making over there, but, for the, but the, yeah, the, the factory hasn't grown very much since the previous stream. So, I think that means it's time to move on to stream six. By stream six, these spaghetti seem to be getting even worse, if anything. There now seems to be a, a belt bringing those look like iron plates to me up all the way across the diagonal, the, uh, diagonally across the front of the factory, and then feeding them in over there, presumably because I didn't have enough iron plates being brought in up there, or something like that. There is iron being dug up here, then being passed through here and smelted here to be made into iron, iron ingots which are going into a, into a machine here to make into iron plates that are then being stored in this box and then being fed up this belt over here. That's horrendous. What was I thinking? I don't know. But also we've also got a supply of concrete coming through here from this limestone mine over here being passed up along another belt that just goes over the top of everything, up an elevator, over the top of all of that, and then presumably going in to make the encased industrial beams over there, so that's, um, that's fun too. I also noticed as I loaded that I've now made the most cursed transportation device in the game, which is this thing, the zip line, and you can use this with your, um, with your high voltage long distance power cable, so you can, you can grab onto them with this widget thing, and then just slide along them from pylon to pylon like this, which is, um, Egg kind of ridiculous, but uh, you know it it, it 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 kind of works. I'm not I, I I don't want to be too positive about it because it is horrible. And um, if you have any sort of sharp turns or any any sort of problem, you will just end up falling to your doom, probably into an infinite abyss of uh, of sadness like down there. Um, but that's not the that's not the point right now. The reason I've come over here is to show you that I've also built a Caterium mine. So this is Caterium is, as far as I can tell, another word for gold. Uh, it's, it, it's used in similar sort of ways for electronics purposes. It looks like gold. They've just given it a different different name, probably for copyright reasons. Who knows? Um, but yes, the as you can probably as you can see, grabbing onto these things at the moment it's not too bad. But I've often found l a lot of difficulty with these things later on, especially if you're using them over long distances. They're also not all that quick, um, <clears throat> and sometimes, well, actually that time I didn't just fly off at the corner, which is quite nice, but they're very, it's quite difficult to get on and off without, without, without certain risks, and every so often you'll, yes, you'll hit a piece of scenery like that, and there we go, and just fall off and hurt yourself. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're not fantastic, I'm not, not a huge fan, but they are, but they are better than walking, at least when you start having to go long distances. So, let's find out why I've put in this arm of, uh, of, of plate, this, this extra thing of plates coming in over here. So it looks like these are all going in for making the, uh, making the reinforced iron plate, so clearly I had a need for a lot more of those. And so I'm bringing in a, a much, much larger quantity. And the concrete, as I say, is going over the top there and then being brought down over here to go into this machine along with the steel beams. And this produces the encased industrial beam. So this is a sort of a next tier of, of, of strengthening stuff. And you can, you can tell these to an extent by when you, when you look at the types of belts you can make. So you get conveyor belt mark one is essentially made out of iron. Conveyor belt mark two is made out of reinforced iron plates. Conveyor belt mark three is made out of steel beams. And conveyor belt mark four, which I haven't actually researched yet, is made out of these encased industrial beams. So as you get further and further on into the game, as you get better and better types of belts, that, that's sort of a nice signifier of where you are in the game as to what you're making your belts out of and, and what you have to have made. And looking at these uh, belts around here, what brings up another one of the things that I quite like about Satisfactory is the sheer scale of everything. Now in Factorio, lots of your machinery and stuff feels really quite small. And I think part of that is because you're seeing it from above. Uh, the, uh, the machine is probably going to be at least sort of twice as, maybe 50% maybe taller than the engineer and several times wider, especially when you get onto the mods like Space Exploration, where you have some absolutely enormous buildings. But because Satisfactory is a first-person game, you get this real sense of scale for these things when, they, when the machines tower over you. And when you look at these steel beams coming through here, they actually they look pretty big and, 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 and chunky. Uh, and the, these iron bars that are coming through here, they also, again, they look, they look big. You, they look like you could pick them up and beat one of the, uh, one of the critters you find to death with them. Even the big boxes of screws that come through. I mean, those are that that is a big box of screws. I'm not sure I could lift that in real life. Uh, at least I'm not sure I could lift it with those sort of plastic. If it was in one of those plastic containers, it's in. We're talking about some seri seriously big stuff in this game, and I I really like that. It makes things feel big and industrial and chunky. The, the downside of that is it means when you're trying to build something, it you, you spend a lot of your time scrambling around trying to climb up on buildings like this and trying to, when you're trying to put things in place, and it's quite hard to see how they line up. Now, there are a few things that will help. So, for example, if I, if I say I want to build another one of these assemblers, 
Uh, let's not choose an assembler because that's a, bit, a really big machine. Let's say a constructor. I could put that in over here. I could say I want to put it in over here and I want to feed it from a bell. Well, if you're getting close to see where, where it's going, then you can't see what you, you can't really see what you're doing. Uh, and if you get far away, then it's harder to put it and it's harder to put it down in the right place and to make sure it lines up. For example, I might want to line the orange input up with the output of that machine over there. Now you can hold down control and that's supposed to make things snap together. And you can see it that green line that's appeared. It definitely helps. It makes things a lot easier if I put that there. Well, probably find that it is actually lined up with the yes it, it has been lined up with the uh, with the output of this of this storage container and yeah that that works fairly nicely but the other thing I discovered which is really nice is if when you when you're putting on these things down if you press H to lock the hologram then it just puts the building it puts the hologram down you can then find something to climb on and have a look and go is that where I want it well no it's not I wanted to line it up with this one over here so I'll, I'll move it to there and then I can move it a little bit in over this way and then maybe they'll clip together a little bit more easily so there are tools that help, um, but it's still it, it, it's a little bit harder to build things than it is in in Factorio. And later on, I'll talk a bit more about blueprints and so on, um, because that is also an another sort of another problem and the sort of the the issues I've been having with snapping various bits and pieces together. But I think that can wait for a for a later video. Looking down here onto the onto the ground floor of the factory, we can see that a bit there's there's been some further expansion. I've now got machines making these. Uh, what, what even are these things called? Uh, the modular frames, and you get through a lot of those, and they're being used. What are they? They're being used over here for making the versatile frameworks. And versatile frameworks are one of those things you basically make because you need them for the um, for the phases of the of the space elevator. So the space elevator that's somewhere. Oh, there it is. It's obviously it's towering over everything because it goes all the way to space. Uh, that that demands certain things in order to unlock later stages of research. So you can see at the moment I'm trying to work on objective phase three which requires 2,500 of these versatile frameworks, 500 of those, are those motors, and then also 100 adaptive control units, I think those things are. Uh, and so down here, I'm trying to, I, I'm, I'm making at least some of the uh, of the versatile frameworks, but it's requiring a lot of resources, so I've paused it at the moment. And those are going to have to be transported over and put into the elevator to be taken off to space to, to, to complete, the, complete that phase and unlock new types of uh, research milestones. The research milestones tend to be a little bit easier. If I go over to the, to the hub building, then I can use this hub computer terminal thing here and from here I can choose which milestone I want to do. So for example I could research gas masks which would unlock a gas mask, a gas filter and some more inventory slots, sounds useful. Or I could um, unlock alternative fluid transport uh, which would get me a, um, a machine that puts fluids into tanks, little cans you can carry it around in, uh, package fuel, various different things in here. So as you can see, and each one of these will cost some stuff. So for this one, for example, I would need to produce some heavy modular frames, some motors, some plastic, and some uh, and some wire. And then I need to feed all of these things into the hub, where they will then be put into a into a little drop pod. That's this thing on the outside here, which then flies off into space, and that unlocks some extra research for you, allowing you to then start building all those all those additional things you've unlocked. So at the moment, I'm trying to do industrial manufacturing, but it needs all of these components, most of which I, I either don't have or don't have in sufficient quantities. But once you've got them, you can then come over here and I can drop my um, 484 cables in here and that will go towards the uh, towards the production. They get stored away inside the uh, inside the launch capsule and allows you to, uh, ready to build stuff. There is also a third research unlock system over here. This is the MAM, and that probably stands for something, but I can't remember what. Oh, molecular analysis machine, fine. And so with this one, you've got these various different types of uh, trees of research that you can work your way through. So once you've got Caterium, for example, you can start doing, well, you can research Caterium by finding 10 pieces of it out, out there in the world somewhere. Uh, and then once you've got, then once you've, once you've researched Caterium, that will allow you to scan for it, I think. Yes, you can then scan for it. Once you've done that, you can then uh, bring over some, in, uh, you can then bring over a load of the ore and, it'll t and then you'll learn about making the ingots. Once you've learned about making ingots, you then need to make another 50 of those to show that you can. And that will unlock quick wire, which is a useful thing. And also some shop products for them. And that's for the uh, the shops I'll touch on in a moment. And then from there, you can go on, you need a load more, uh, a load more quick wire and that will unlock the um, electronics tree down here or you can go for the zip line and that was the thing that was allowing me to slide along the power lines earlier and that costs as you can see 61 quick gold wire and 50 copper cables so you bring those over you feed them in and it'll do the research for you or you can get stun rebar which is ammunition for one of the uh, not very good guns you can you can make uh, which will allow you to uh, which presumably does does stun I don't know I still haven't unlocked this in, in, even in even in my uh, even even in the game where I've got to at the moment and you also get power pole mark twos, and these are fantastic because you can plug a lot more things into them, so that makes things a lot easier. But this requires a load of the quick wire, and I haven't made enough of that yet, so I can't do this one. 
Over here, we also have the uh, the biofuel processing system that I was talking about before. So over here, I have a, a container that I can put in any wood that I gather in my travels around the world. So I could dump this into here, for example, like that. And I get that when I chop down trees that are in the way. So that And that can then be fed out along this belt here where it goes into a, a, a constructor here. And this one is turning that, that few, the, well, it's turning leaves at the moment, but it can also turn wood into, uh, into biomass. Let's give it some more leaves. Uh, it will then chew through all of that, turning it into biomass, which will then be fed up with this belt that goes into the top warehouse over there, because I don't need the biomass myself. That's then passed out from here to this uh, constructor, which I've put on a piece of raised um, uh, foundation to keep it out of the way. But that is turning all of that biomass into biofuel pellets, which are then passed through and go into this upper uh, warehouse here. And at the moment, I've probably got a decent amount of it. Let's have a look. Yeah, I've got, I've got quite a lot of that at the moment. And that can be taken out and then put into all of my biofuel generators. And I've made quite a few of these because I needed quite a lot of power in my early game. You get two of them on the back of your hub building in, um, just automatically. And then I've built up a few more as well. But these ones, as I say, you have to feed them by hand. So at the moment, this one's got 130 left in it. I could give it a, a little bit more. Uh, there you go, 182 of it as a maximum 200. And it'll burn through that and that produces a bit more power and keeps the, uh, keeps the lights on, keeps the system running. But these machines are capable of burning almost anything biological. So I could I could chuck in these these uh, flower petals that again I've, I've gathered by uh, from cutting down trees. I could also throw in bits and pieces that are, that are the remains from the various animals I've killed out there as well. So there's lots of stuff in here that you can you can burn and turn into and turn into electricity. But the solid biofuel lasts a lot longer than anything else per unit of fuel you put into it. Uh, so it's much more useful to put this stuff in. Because it, because you don't then have to refuel it as often, and also for every every piece of wood you get, you get more electricity if you process it through into biofuel than you do if you just chuck it in as wood. Moving on to stream number seven, and this is where the the Christmas bonus event kicked in, or, or Fixmas as I believe they call it. And so this allowed me to start doing all kinds of festive stuff. So I, I've, I've got machines. Around, as you can see, I've built a snowman. Uh, there are various. Um, Tech, new tech trees unlocked that allow you to make things like uh, baubles and uh, you can put lights on your power cables, you can build a giant Christmas tree. There's a whole present based economy that gets uh, that gets added into the game at this point and, uh, and allows you to do other novelty stuff. And you also get a load of presents falling out of the sky which you can harvest additional resources from. Uh, the resources are all entirely Christmas based, they don't help with the normal game, but you get, you get a little bit of a bonus from that. So I was playing around with that, I was picking up the presents as I ran around and I managed to research a snowman, so um, yay. And a lot of that was done through the MAM, I believe if I look in here, no it's gone again now. The, the Christmas event is no longer in here because as, as I pre record this video it is now March and so Christmas has well and truly ended. However, looking in my inventory you can see that I do have uh, some ornament bundles and a couple of baubles over here as well uh, because, well, because of Christmas, basically. And I think, are those some, yes, those are some tree Christmas tree branches as well. However, the exciting new development in this uh, stream wasn't so much the, the Christmas stuff, although, you know, that was very nice. Who, does, who doesn't like a bit of Christmas? But I discovered that the next thing I needed to work on was going to be oil processing. And oil processing is rather a long way away. So I'm going to be spending quite a bit of time on these zip lines heading over. But, you know, the good news is I can speed all this up for you. This was a bit of a faff when I was actually playing it live on stream and every so often I'd realised I'd forgotten something fairly important and had to go back and get it. Uh, because, yeah, this is, whilst this is better than, this, this, this system of getting around is certainly better than walking, it's not as fast as I would have liked it to be. But as we travel over, you can see the uh, the landscape and uh, the scenery is changing quite a bit. We're going from the the, the sort of the fairly realistic, natural um, green area of the uh, of the starting point over into some very much more alien and weird terrain. And so I came through here initially, sort of putting in the um, putting in pylons in, in wherever it seemed sensible to, to get the power transported over there and to give myself a way to, to get around using the uh, using the zip line system. Oh, where you get sudden unexpected dismounts every so often, like that. So this, you see, this is this is why I am uh, not a huge fan of the um, of this system for getting around. Also, there's scarier um, enemies over here, which I'm not equipped to deal with at the moment. So we're just going to um, we're just going to run away from them for now. But then down here, I was finally able to get in get my um, oil processing facility set up. So down here, I found some. Oops, Smack. I, down here I found an oil patch where I was able to start digging oil out, that's been brought up a pipe along here, and going into a processing system over here. Now the plastic processing is a little bit awkward, because the refinery takes in the crude oil from the, uh, from, from the mine, and then turns it into plastic, but it also produces heavy oil residue. So, we've, okay, we've got plastic coming out, that's nice. We're able to ship that off along the belt over there to take it, well, somewhere. We'll, work, we'll worry about that in a moment. 
and then you feed the heavy oil residue into another refinery where it turns it into fuel oil or fuels, it just calls it fuel. At the moment, I don't really have anything to do with that, so I'm, uh, I'm just stockpiling it in these tanks down here, and that's not going to be a, a particularly good system for the future, but don't worry, in the next stream I'll come up with a way to deal with that. So from here, we are then able to take away the plastic. Uh, am I going to be able to use this ladder? Yes, I am. Wow, that makes a change. Um, yeah, we are then able to produce some plastic, which is coming through here at a, at a rate. And we're feeding that up along here. Uh, and then sending it up an elevator here, which goes up to the, uh, the next level up. And I believe at this point I have I have some trucks, some little tractor things coming over and picking that up. And you'll remember what I said earlier when I was talking about the previous stream about how annoying it is to uh, to try and program in uh, a route for a tractor. So you can imagine just how bad and how frustrating it was getting the damn things going all the way from here, from my truck stop here, all the way. Well, I then uh, they, you can see the uh, the tractor tr trundling along there. I then essentially set up a route along here, and all these markers, these house markers, were because those appear on my radar. Those were there to allow me to um, to try and navigate the truck manually. Because while you're driving it, you don't want to stop because if you do, the tractor will stop there every single time it's doing that route for you, and that's frustrating because it's a waste of time. You don't want to drive into anything, you don't want to go the wrong way, because again, the tractor will do all of that as well. And it's very difficult, if, if not impossible, to, to go in and fiddle with a route once it's been set up. So, essentially, uh, and this area around here is extremely 3D. You can tell by the uh, the shading here. So the darker to cut colours down here show that this is down in the bottom of a valley, and there's water down there as well. And then each of these darker lines shows essentially a cliff edge, and the lighter ones are essentially contour lines. And they get up here, you can tell it's a bit slightly lighter colour, so it's higher up, and higher and higher and higher all the way over here so it's not particularly realistic to drive through down here which is why why the uh, the plastic is being brought up on a long elevator first and it's not particularly really well okay there's a way out over here but then I guess you could probably maybe squeeze her over here but then I don't know what you do so it's it's difficult terrain uh, there aren't very many ways in and out so I eventually ended up having the uh, having my tractor driving up on up this level along here um, through here and then I think there's a way up probably here and then through here, and then there's a, a cave system, this little tunnel here that I went through. And then down along this canyon, up out of here, and over, over to here where it could drop it off. So it's a horrible and torturous route, um, but it does kind of work. But you'll be pleased to know that within a, with a, in a, within a few streams, I'll come up with a better system. And that just gets around all of this and is much less horrible. But you can see, here comes that uh, loyal little tractor now. It's uh, tr tr trundled in, and it's ready to pick up the, uh, the all the plastic that's been made from the docking station, like... Well, apparently like that. Apparently that went into the tractor. Um, so if we, if we have a look at the tractor now, we can see that, um, yes, it's got some plastic in it. And so it will then whoop, attempt to drive off. Uh, as a bit of a three... Is it trying to... I, I want to say it's trying to do a three-point turn, but I'm honestly not sure. Nope, it's just falling off. Ugh. These tractors, my good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have moved away from them, as you can probably tell. But yes, we have it. We have the plastic being brought up on a conveyor belt over here. It's going into the truck station. It's loading that up, and eventually it'll get put onto the truck, which will then take it back over to the main base, where it can then be used for well, whatever I need to use plastic for. As you can see, the only way to get up here for myself is this ludicrously long ladder. But you know, it it kind of works. Or to slide back up the uh, the cables here. Well, actually, that, that that is technically possible. Um, the zip line will let you zip up a line as well as down a line, so uh, that's fun. But yeah, the whole system is. <laughs> it's a little bit horrible. It, um, th this whole system around here is, is a bit of a mess. We've got some crazy long elevators here. Uh, it turns out there is, a, there is a way to make it a really, really long elevator with only a single piece, but I don't think I've unlocked the bits and pieces I need for that yet. So we've got the, a maximum length elevator, then clipped to another elevator to bring the, uh, the, bring the plastic all the way up here. But, you know, it works, so I'm not going to knock it too hard. <laughs> I think that's been a, a decent length for one of my uh, satisfactory updates, so I th hope you found it satisfactory. So if you have, please uh, please subscribe to the channel, there'll be another video coming out at some point in the future. These are a nice sort of extra video to tack in here and there, uh, where, wherever there's a, there's a gap in all the other videos, and just to, yeah, to, to keep, because I think people are interested in what's been going on in the playthrough, and, and it's nice to have a summary video, rather than having to go off and watch uh, 15 hours of stream in order to get the, in order to see all, everything that I've been uh, talking about today. Uh, a lot of which was me zipping up and down these zip lines because I came out here and then realized I'd forgotten some of the bits and pieces I needed to make something. So yes, please make sure you're subscribed and uh, come back. There'll be there'll be streams on the channel. There'll be more videos on the channel. There's loads of stuff going on. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed. Come, come along to watch what's happening next time. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you then. Bye bye.